<laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you guys doing? I hope you're here as well. So I'm Guillaume here at Close Solène on the winemaker for the one who doesn't know. You don't need to scream on the microphone is here. I'm Solène. Hi, thank you for being here today. Are you ready to cook? Uh, yes, for you have some housekeeping stuff to do first. Yeah, absolutely. First, so, we, we want to check with Roxanne is with us, but she's checking if everything is going well. Is going well, Roxanne? Okay. Hello. Perfect. Sorry, the, the, kids. the kids are here having lunch because in California time it's uh, noon. <laughs> so I hope you guys got all the bottles. So um, let's get uh, going with um, with a couple of updates, pretty much of uh, what's going on right now. So as uh, the estate is, uh, we got a lot of rain, which is good. Uh, California, we got about 28 inches, which is awesome. We didn't get any flood. We got very lucky. But definitely the vineyard has a lot of water to be able to grow from that and uh, do a good crop in 23. We are pretty excited about it. So Roxanne is going to kind of show for the one that came to the estate. What was closer in? Uh, what was the estate when we bought? We bought in 17. It was five stone. The year this um, one was born. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so definitely the estate was just like that. Uh, definitely a lot of, um, you know, brushes and things like that. And then last year we took another picture which will definitely see the difference, everything growing briefly. Um, so yeah, if Roxanne you can move the one from the past, yep, so that's exactly the one we need. So you can see the difference. The vines are beautiful now. Uh, everything got uh, harvested this year in 22. We got our first crop with about 60, 60 tons. And all the 2022, all of them will be about 50 or 60% of all the wine. So very excited about that. Um, so before we um, we jump into the testing and the bread making, let's do some housekeeping a little bit. So you guys got all the bottles, right? Pretty cute. So that was actually a system made by Coravin. Uh, Coravin came up with that machine about two years ago that you are able to take a bottle, go to that machine, and then uh, end up with all the little vials, which is actually for two persons. A few of you guys got... At the old-fashioned way, the smaller ones, where you have one for each person. Who did you pick at the old one? It's because we had a few order on the last minute, and you, if nobody knows me, I never say no. So I say, yeah, we can go the old-fashioned way, you know. So long story short, everybody got the wine, which is amazing. So I don't know if you guys did a fly tasting, or uh, if you do one by one, it's very on your leisure, on your so how you prefer. No big deal. But I think the most interesting will be the bread making. So Solen, tell us how you'll be doing First, this. First, I need him to sit and we need to move the oh, camera yeah, right. down. Because it's always, we cut his head. <laughs> oh, and one detail that's very important. Everyone who's writing comment, there is a 30 second, right, Roxanne? Yeah, 30 second. 30 okay. second, and Roxanne, come say hi to the camera. Well, weren't you supposed to come say hi? At, at the end. No, it's okay. <laughs> say hi now. It's too Hello. <laughs> She's right behind. And uh, so there is a 30 second delay. So if we are kind of a little bit off, it's because there is those 30 seconds. So yeah, I see some, uh, if you have question, you can write them down and I'll make sure I, I mean, are you on it? Yeah, Roxanne sorry? will be, um, yeah, taking those those uh, questions anytime you have on the wine, the bread. Um, yeah. You gotta be on Google though, to be able to send actually- On uh, a Gmail account, yeah. On Gmail account, yeah, that's right. So okay. to ask questions, you gotta be on Gmail. So actually, um, I don't need that now. Sorry, I went ahead of time. We need that. So I took a clear one, but you can have any kind of salad bowl in glass, in stainless steel, or in plastic. I don't recommend plastic because it's not environmental, environmental friendly, but if you have it, use it. So we'll do one loaf. I have a big one because I usually quadruple the quantities, but today we'll do for one big family size. I call that the family size loaf. So, uh, I hope you have everything with you, or I hope you have you are writing things down. But um, we take a three cup flour. So you see, I have my uh, but here is a three cup. As I put in the recipe, you can use um, the gold brand or the Arthur King brand, and they both sell better for bread. I am lucky enough that now I used to do that, but I've been able to switch to. Um, a company called the Central Milling Company, and you can Google them, and they have several places that you can have. And I have kind of the big 
bag actually. Or Alexa, you want to give you a market on the on the chat? Yeah, of course. This is my big bag now because I make so many for the testing room. As they, what is Central the milling company, and I think it's Central. Central milling company. I'm going to write here in the chat. Take it with you. With your brother. Sorry, the kids are interrupting. But so that's now how I uh, get my bread, and it's actually not exactly for bread. Uh, it's a kind of the all-purpose one, and I get it through the restaurant. But there is a lot of location they can bring the bags, and you can get it. Um, so I, I have the instructions here. Oh, so good. so tell me if I'm following yeah. correctly. Three cup of flowers. I'm just dumping it in. Okay. So now my dry active yeast, my active dry yeast, which is in my fridge, so I'm going right there right now. And um, yeast, you can find those ones, there is those little, um, how do you say sachet, those little uh, bags. bags, the mini ones. And uh, But you have also the bigger bags where uh, Bob Miller makes it, that's the one I used to use, and now I even, I don't find it all the time, so I even get the star one at Smart Final. They have one that's called Star, I think. So dry active active dry yeast. So because I get a big bag, yes, Roxanne. There's a question from Jeff Mayer. Jeff Mayer, did you ship the flour ahead of time? Uh, sift, meaning like I made it through uh, what sift means. Uh, sorry, well, it's all French people here. Well, we have like well, an issue. One reference for one second. I think it's kind of irated, right? Um, let me go to my word reference. Sift, sift, sift. We'll learn French and English. Tamisé. Yeah, tamisé, meaning you irate it. I didn't. I, didn't. I actually. Straight from the bag. Yeah, I took it from the bag here to calculate three cups and I it's just. Super done. easy. <laughs> so, no, no sift, sifting. No need. Three quarter of a teaspoon. And I go in, and I'm not exactly super strict about the quantity, just dump in. Oh, another question. Other question from Jennifer. Bonjour. Is there a certain protein percentage content in, in your recommended plan? It's high. Um, Let me just. High gluten. gluten. It's high gluten, but it doesn't say about the protein, right? It's organic wheat, organic wheat, high mm -hmm. gluten, but there is none specification. But I can send the link. We can write that, Roxanne, and go and send the link of that company because they have a whole thing online with plenty of different flowers you can use. So we'll make sure. Uh, we do so that. You think we can able we can start drinking or not? So. No, not yet. No. So I take my wood spoon, but I use the uh, handle not the actual spoon. And I just turn around, so I'm just mixing up the dry yeast. I haven't put it in warm water or anything. I just mix it up. And now I'll take uh, half of the quantity of the flour, which is one cup and half of water. So it's, a, it's not warm, but it's more, how would you say, uh, it's ambient temperature, but a little bit higher than ambient temperature, just to kick up that yeast, but you don't want it too warm, otherwise you're killing the yeast. So I just go to my sink. I would be able to put it on the... I can still turn it. So that's the only... I'm waiting so the water becomes a little bit warm. Sorry for the time. I should have put it ahead of time. Okay. But it's okay. 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 If you want to guys get ready with the wine, coming up in five minutes, we'll start with the rosé, la rose. So one cup and a half of uh, not super hot, but a little bit than just ambient temperature, and I just dump it in. Okay, that's it. And now I don't stir it yet. I will put my salt. I like kosher salt because it gives a, a better saltiness into it. Now it's your own choice. Jeff um, has a question. It's a good one. What do you mean it's not time to start drinking is rice? You huh? can start drinking three quarters of a tablespoon. I am not very precise either. I mean, I take my tablespoon and up, go in. And that's when you start mixing up still with the handle. And I just want all the flour to be wet. It's my only purpose here. You want to showcase that? Yeah, yeah I'll show it after a bit. So sometimes it's better when I do small quantity to do it in a salad bowl or something like that. But here we go. All my flour is wet. And also, 
If you really want to go, I take one ring, the one that will attach stuff, the other one don't care. And if you really want to go, you can just go to the side and bring it in the middle, but it's not even necessary. It's necessary when I do a bigger quantity because I need to dive in and flip it up. But right now it's a small quantity, so everything is wet. It's perfect. Look at my bowl. If that's I easy, I can do it actually, right? Yeah, you could, but you're so bad at cooking. <laughs> and so I don't, I mean, I don't really push that. I just put a cover, but it can be like a towel or a plastic wrap. You see how loose it is? And you leave it to the side. And so now, for example, if you do it now, in six hours, you can do a bread. Even sometimes a four hour, if it's a warmer temperature inside, you'll see that the bubble will start. So a very minimum four hours, six hours is good. I went up to maximum 20 hours. I don't recommend that because it was like overflowing, <laughs> but I would say an overnight or a morning for the evening, it's perfect. Uh, are you doing the white or I, I do the second step? Let's do it. Uh, yeah, do the second step now. So let's say we go forward and it's uh, six hours ahead of time, over, ahead. So I did it for you this morning at 6 a.m. I woke up and I did my batch. And here it is. So six hours have passed. And now I have, you can see, I have some humidity here because it's been working pretty well. And my dough is like that. It's, you don't maybe see it, but there is a little bit of bubble and it's all active. So I get flowers, the same flour I used for the bread. I put it on, spread it on my, on my table or on my piece of, I don't know how you call that. But. So I like to have a scrapper. If you don't have a scrapper, it's not a problem. But very easy, you take the dough out. That oh, smells so good. Mm. It's, like the yeast. it's almost like Firestone when you pass in the morning and it smells the yeast. <laughs> so I love it. Okay, dump it. Grab whatever is. <laughs> the kids are playing with Legos on the back. And here is my dough. And what I'm going to do, I flatten not too much. Don't work it too much. But I flatten the dough. And I fold it. So I will fold it to the track three quarter. So here. Three quarter, I push. I go to the ba the bottom, three quarter, I push. There is a question, I'm coming. I take each side, the four side, three quarter, I push, three quarter, I push. Keep going one more time until it's kind of not easy to fold anymore. And push and push. Did you see I didn't malax too much? Now I make sure it's dense and the, I call that the scar, I'll put it down and you leave it like that. And now you let it rise. I'll come in with the question. So the time you let it rise, I used to be doing two hours of, of rising. It doesn't need two hours, actually. Sometimes just a 20 minutes, it's enough. Or maybe today, yeah, 20 minutes is good. By the time you start your oven, wait until it gets to the temperature, which is a 460. And uh, you'll see what happens after. We'll cut it together after we do the first round of testing. So you said so you question. Went... Do you ever use any whole wheat flour in your... Yes, I love it. He hates it, even though it's healthier. I mean, it depends. But yeah, I sometimes I do a full whole wheat, which is very dense, and I do exactly the same thing. Maybe a little bit more water, but you will feel it when you, you, ma you malax your dough and you feel like it's very dry. You add a little bit of water. And, um, and sometimes I cut, I do half and half for three quarter, one quarter. Yes, I play with all wheat and I play with grains too, which the grains, I add them at the same time I add the salt and I mix it all together. Uh, Bob, oops, I missed. Uh, do no, it you was ever the same use... question. Oh, okay, yeah. So that was my question. Do you have any other one? No. Okay. All right, ready for the tasting? We'll go for the cutting after. Ready for the... Hands. All right, so I just poured the uh, the rosé. You know, you have this one or you have that one. So that's for two person, that's one person, so whatever you did. So let's talk about the the, the vintage 22. So 22 uh, was definitely a vintage, was like one on the record, the fastest uh, in terms of maturity. Everything got ripe fast. Um, and so we we had to kind of move really quick on the picking on, on all the varietals. Um, so we were 
pretty much about 80% done by the end of the month of uh, August. It was crazy. It was uh, such, a, such an interesting year. It was warm uh, and all the variants all got really quite, quite, you know, got ready really quick. So what's about this rosé? You know, if you look at the color, you know, you can typically see, uh, you can definitely a color that is almost no color. I mean, you get seen our old rosé, um, um, uh, our old rosé style, I'm sorry. I had a question, Grenache on the nose of the rosé. It's awesome, nicely done. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> so, Roxanne, do you want to show? Um, we have a, actually a nice picture that was actually oh. Solen and I. <laughs> that was actually in Teen City. Uh, if you guys remember the one visited, I think a lot of people here, members on this, on this uh, session uh, knew us from the beginning. And you can see the number two wine on the right. It was a rosé. Unbelievable, right? It's totally red. Like it's made with pretty much 100% Syrah. And it was uh, uh, made with Signe, which means that we were picking the Syrah at normal ripeness to make homage, to make Fleur de Solène and all of those ones. And then we're bleeding off right away. So it had like a very quick skin contact. And then we, we took it, fermented in stainless steel and fermented it, you know, that's what became the rosé, La Rose. That was in 2010. Definitely you see the start of the change is a huge difference. And year after year, we can dial the blend and, you know, more precise and more precise. And I think now we got it, you know. I think something that we pick actually on ripeness. So we go specific parcel blocks in the west side. We have 30% estate fruit on that. And um, we pick at about 22 bricks, very, very low sugar. Yeah, it doesn't have any color. We, it's all made with Grenache, um, uh, Moved, Senso, and a new Grenache, Grenache Grey, which we'll talk about in a minute. So definitely it's a blend that's made with only red grapes, but it's a white wine, you know. So why it became white? It's not a white wine. The no, color it's kind of, is white. It's kind of white color, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, how did it become white? Uh, whiter like this. Last year was definitely pale, but this year is different. And the, one of the reasons was we started to pick a block of Grenache Grey, um, it's, a, it's a clusters who has actually... It's nice <laughs> <laughs> who is actually totally gray. And it's actually grown in the Roussillon where I grew up. We do we put some on a, a sweet clementine just to add complexity. But we said this year, you know what? You know, I think let's do some rosé with it. And it became a beautiful uh, component on the blend, and we put it up. And right before bottling, when everything was done and we're done filtering, because we filter a little bit to be very like that, sparkling clean and clear. And it became totally white, kind of. You know, it's it's slightly slightly uh, pinkish. But if it's um, more on that side, so I would say due to the Grenache gray inside, so it's kind of new components, but you, you'll love it. You know, you'll see when we, I just had to see it a little bit. So the, the last component of rosé, it's how can we make it uh, from the gray grapes to, the, to, to that. So we take actually a, a press. When we pick the fruits, we, we put the fruit in this press and this press, you have a bladder inside. This bladder can inflate. Um, as soon as you inflate more and more and more, you push the juice out of the basket, uh, of, out of the slots, and then we make the juice from that to become the rosé. So we actually, when we slightly, gently press these grapes, just to make that color, you know, we can stop halfway through, and we don't go further than that. If you go further than that, it's going to become red, more tannins, acidity will drop because it's more potassium released. And then you start to have more mouthfeel, have a rosé, a little bit more like phenolic, like more wineish, you know, reddish. So definitely we want to kind of keep that freshness and minerality. So let's have a taste. Let's see what you think. I already did. Have you tried? Yeah, I did. You're so concentrated that I don't see anything. Wow. <laughs> Can I get a He's three proud of himself. Okay. Can I get a three liters, Roxanne? <laughs> we might have needed acid. We make actually big bottles, three liters, magnums. I know a lot of you guys love drinking, so you definitely should step it up on a bigger size when you drink that. Because what is it? It's fresh, it's tropical, it's kind of very it's white very flower. Refreshing. And the finish, the finish is like almost having a glass of water on the finish. It's very watery. And that is saltness, minerality, and that's we uh, because it's our water, we are on a well. <laughs> it's not pool water. <laughs> but this kind of a minerality freshness on the mid palette finish, 
really make want you to have another glass, right? Thank oh, you, thank Erica. you, thank you, Erica. <laughs> don't don't be scared when you get the bottles and definitely a lighter color. It's actually a beautiful wine, as you can see, right? Well, he said that, but he was super worried. He came home and he's like, did you see there is no color in the rosé? <laughs> I'm like, if the flavor out there, what is the problem? And you know what people do when it's like, like that? They take a little bit of red and they do like a couple of drops. No, you laugh, but it's true. Like 0.5%. No, it doesn't change because you talk about 0.2%, mm -hmm. but you can really kind of start to change the color, you know? So, I, you know, it's what it is. You know, it's no... Um, uh, so it become like that, you know. So it's that like because of the Pinot, you said the Gris, the, the Grenache Gris, the Grenache yeah. Gris, and uh, but it's not because when when you get the grapes and you say you you take the juice very quickly out of the, the press, of yeah. the press, um, would you if you leave it longer to get more color, you would lose some of that acidity and minerality? Yeah, you do absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because the acid are on the first juice. And more you press, more you get into the skin. And, and red skin, wine, yeah. And skin have a lot of potassium and acidity drop. Okay. You know? I don't want to be too chemist. <laughs> Judy, how are you? <laughs> how would you taste change in the longer format? In the larger format. Larger format. If at all. That's even better. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, um, I will say, as you all know, larger formats tend to age more. And that kind of wine, uh, will age like four or five years easily. Totally and why? Easily. Do you know why is it? Because you have freshness and oh, you oh, because of the form, because you have more wine into the bottle. So definitely because of that. Okay, yeah. so it aged better together. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can come say hi quickly, Clemmy. Our oldest is working today. It's a busy weekend. So here she is. Hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so Solène, do you want to... No, do the white, because my oven is still on. Okay, oven is still on, let's move on the white, and then we'll get into the... Not any more question. <laughs> yeah, Judy, you're all good. Um, so let's move to the white. Uh, another 22 vintage. Uh, the white homage blanc, it's a wine that called in the past Essence de Roussin. It was a straight Roussin. I love Roussin for one reason, is I grew up you know, very young, making wine with my dad. And that was one of the vital of white I loved. Another question, what will you serve with the rosé with Jennifer? Hey, Jennifer. Um, mm. oh, well, that's a good question. I well, first of all, it's a breakfast wine, I would say. <laughs> so, a brunch, so brunch. brunch. <laughs> uh, I think anything appetizer, but I see like good crostinis or, you know, like a bed, um, a bread base, like a little bit in a, no, with like. Yeah, that could be a, that could be great. I mean, it's so has so much texture on the back too, a little bit that it will go with you know white meat. Alexa, what did we had at the even Paris? a turkey? Uh, we did actually great tasting. I mean, maybe some of you are in Texas and came to see us. We actually did a trip in Texas where we rented the B and B, and Roxanne and I and Jacob. Um, we took all the spring release, the one we taste today, and they, they were coming. They were like just a couple of blocks away. It was, it was amazing.
à la maison. Perfect. Sorry, guys, we're back on it's live. <laughs> okay, a little bit of stress here. So you were on the alcohol uh, Alcohol level. Uh, I hope uh, we didn't miss much things. So no, alcohol we're level, we are at 13.3 uh, uh, alcohol percent. So pretty low. But the first rosé were more like 14.5 to 14.8. So definitely a big switch. So definitely feel that. So... Everybody here as well, can you tell us yes? And then they were, um, if somebody was using the technique in France from, uh, it's not Bob, it's Becky actually. If everyone is using, doing the technique with the rosé wine in France. Yeah, because you have two techniques, the saignée and uh, using the... Anyone in France doing this technique? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody is making rosé, uh, we're not inventing the, the wheel definitively. Um, the saignée rosé, it's one style. And then the uh, direct press, it's actually another style that uh, different people use, you know, different style. Yeah. Yeah. So I really hope we don't uh, break again uh, with the internet. I deeply apologize, but if you've been to Closolen, you'll understand we are kind of a far out winery and we deal with that every day. Roxanne deals with that every day. So, so sorry about that. Thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> so let's move to the, the wine, right? You good with the. Well, we can do the bread. Okay, whatever. what don't we? Okay. Now we Oh yeah, okay. Roxanne is telling us to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you might not see it, but we are a bit stressed too, you know? It's... No, you are stressed. <laughs> so, we can go here with our clean your hands. I'm doing it. And um, so we can keep our bread like that, which would be a family style. So I like to give it a one more. So I flip it where the scar was. I kind of push it down and just fold it one more time. And I flatten a little bit and that would be my family size bread, okay? Now, if you want smaller portion, you can always... <coughs> where do I have my... Oh, here. You can always... <coughs> cut it. And that's what I do for the tasting room or when I want smaller bread which is kind of rare that I want it, but I have to make it. And so you flatten the part and you fold it the same way. Three quarter, push in, three quarter, push in <coughs> on the other side, same thing. Okay, the can, scar can is here. Can you go slower because Sorry. It's, uh, you go really fast and- I'm so used I, to it. Yeah. And so now I just roll it a little bit more. So kind of I flatten a little bit my bread and you can make it even the baguette size if you want to. So don't hesitate on, Finding the wrong way, but when you when you flatten, you always go center and you move toward the extremity. Okay, so that's one. Let's do the second one. So I flatten, take one side. I go to three quarter, push with my fingers. Same thing on the other side. You you guys see well? Okay. Yeah, yeah you can now, see. Now the other extreme. So you go you go you go three quarter, right? Yeah, you I go I, I fold and it push at the it three, down. and I push with my fingers. So you push just right the edge where you fold. Just to make it stick and I go deep in, okay? But did you see I didn't malax the rest of the bread? Now I do just to give it the shape. I go center and I move my finger toward the extremity, slowly massaging. And it's kind of a little I don't know, it's so okay. <laughs> 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 is it okay to start baking very soon even though it yeah so yeah because of the timing i'm going a little bit faster than 30 minutes i've done it to be honest yes you can now it's it would be the bread would be a little bit more fluffier if you leave it a little bit longer like 30 minutes and even above 30 minutes the bread will be a little bit bigger it will rise a little bit more but if you are in a hurry or if you want to be on time like me and it happened often that I just wait the time my oven get to 460, and that's what happens. So here I have two medium loaf. Instead of one big family loaf, I cut it into two. But sometimes for the tasting room, if you've been here, I cut those one even in two other. So I have four. From one family loaf, you get two medium and four tiny ones. If it's fancy also at dinner, you make tiny ones. And you can use also, let me show you quickly, uh, Ramka. Sometimes I put them into that so they get the shape and I don't even clean them because then they attach. So little tiny ramkin and I have the round shape too and you can just put the dough in and it'll take the shape of of whatever oven safe. Uh, where, did you, where did you find that? Michael's. Michael's. Yeah. Michael's, Amazon, I'm sure too. 
Now, regular pen, okay, oven pen, and parchment paper. You can use also those uh, reusable uh, silicone, but they tend to burn as fast as those things burn. So I'm, now I go with parchment paper. And so I have two love, one family love in the center. My two love, I put them, I can put them like that. One and two. And I go medium rack. I have one in the medium. And I go in. What the temperature you cook, you said? So 460. And my OCD make me, it's not 30 minutes, but it's 32 minutes. <laughs> so it's just, I will have Do you put some moisture a little bit to make it more crust? So I used to in the past. Oh man, you haven't seen me cook forever. Um, I used to spray or even have a pan with water, but um, three kids, I mean four kids, and uh, it's too much work. So I just let it bake. And I hear the drrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
do you write those questions? We have two things. We have to give the link for the bread and the euro oven from Julie. Okay. Awesome. So that means you're done. We can uh, continue tasting. Am I bothering you? Okay, great. So let's, guy, let's move to the homage blanc a little bit. Sorry again for internet. You know, it's uh, kind of not easy here. Any question on the bread? We can move on the wine. Good. So homage blanc, uh, keep going on 2022 vintage. Uh, homage blanc has been the one that uh, actually evolved uh, beautifully uh, in terms of uh, the final taste to me. It really reminds me some some Chateau Neuf du Pape uh, style wines, uh, white, where they only do Roussan with a little bit of Viognier, a little bit of Grenache Blanc, and some Marsan and all of those. I'm looking for Julie because I think he's doing the bread at the same time. So oh, I'm not okay. rude, I'm looking. We're looking at it. Uh, so uh, why did I really want to move that style away from the 100% Roussan? I was looking for more, you know, I think as i getting older and as we get into more and more into the brand now, more 20 years, we're looking for more, how can we be more layered with actually with less alcohol and be also have minerality as well. So I think the main point is picking. We definitely pick lower than before, like lower bricks. Before was 25, 25 and a half. And now we're about 23 to 23.5. Did change the taste? Absolutely. Make it better? Absolutely, on my style. Because for me, when you have wine with more acid, definitely have more... You know, it's like I always say the spine of the wines. It has no acid, it's going to be less, be less aging potential. It's going to get more, um, uh, I would say, uh, I don't know, a little bit more fatter, bigger. So I think that having that texture like that's beautiful. So uh, ironically, or uh, naively also, now we make a wine very, very close to, again, Chateau Neuf du Pape. It's about 80% Roussin. And that's actually what require in the AOC of this location in the Rhone Valley to be about 80%. It's been two years now where 80%. Do you want to copy? No. We just like there was a perfect balance. So that's a 2022. Uh, Solely uh, 50% of fruit are coming from the estate. Like I said earlier, we have more fruit coming up from the estate. And we started to pick some young vines. And also we have the older vines. That's actually a couple of clusters that uh, Roxanne just uh, showed. That's actually Roussan, it looks like. We can see because all the berries are very kind of, you know, together. Tight, yeah. yeah, together. So the 2022 version, it's uh, it's about 80% Roussan, 16% Viognier, and about 4% Grenache Blanc. So a little bit of Grenache Blanc uh, will actually help to kind of bring the fatness we actually didn't have on the Roussan and the Viognier because of those lower breaks. How can you get fatness also if you pick lower? Is lees, you know. If you actually have lees in a barrel, that's what you see on the bottom of the barrel. That's picture. Um, this actually picture is great to look at. You know, what you see on the bottom, the thick part is a lees, and that's actually um, a result of dead yeast, of uh, things happen during fermentation, that when the fermentation is over, it basically drops down, and you have this kind of thick layer. How can you make it? going back to life, or how can you stir it? We call that batonnage. We take the tool like you see, you know, this kind of straight stick. We actually move the lees, and we make like more of that, you know, lees infusion with the wine, you know, once once a week for two to three months. And that is get more fatness. And that's what we do when we make white. So you pick a little less ripe, and then you play with the lees. If you do actually pick more riper, you don't play with the lees. But that's our style, you know, that's how we do. 22, no lease at all, because the vintage being warm, being scared a little bit of, it's going to be the fatness, you know, losing acidity. As soon as it's very warm, you lose acid with the weather, even if you pick, uh, actually, that's right. So no, no lease uh, contact at all. We just kept it straight like that. Second of all, oh, well, you question, question yeah, Mike. Mike. There is some Dionier on the nose and in the texture. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I got that comment since two days. We just started to open this wine. And I will tell you why. Attends, first, any plan for 100% Viognier down the road? We made one called Laure Blanc in 2011. Oh, that's true. I forgot about it. We have a case one. left, but that is library, oh, guys. Don't tell him. <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> we might. We might. And so why is the Viognier more uh, Pre, showing? Yeah. Uh, so the rosé, the, the Viognier come from some from Glen Rose in the Pitchy Canyon. But one was very uh, showing. It's the one we just speak from the estate. 
we planted the block on totally on a on a shade. And peonies are vital kind of tend to ripe very early. And of course, with cycle change, the peony get riper very quick now because it's warmer. So what we did, we planted that shade area with Vionier. Doesn't get much sun, maybe like 30% of the day. And he actually pushed the ripeness later. And the complexity of this Vionier is unbelievable. It's uh, awesome. It's uh, in Vionier tipis, you know, the tipis style, just like country year. You know, it's kind of a copy of country year, maybe better than country year, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think that's why he's showcasing. We had the 26 in homage blanc that wow. might with scallops. And it was I delicious, yeah. Are... <laughs> 16 was uh, also warmer vintage too, but that was the vintages where the white were picked a touch more riper, you know. And every year we yeah, kind of yeah, but he aged well. Tweak. 16, but he aged well, six yeah. Years. He aged well, so I think he aged well because also where we are from, Paso. Paso was a ton of, you know, um, minerality due to the you know limestone and the shale. All of that really helped to keep keep the wine, you know, as uh, as it is. So the last component is the aging. So if you pick a things a little bit less ripe, you know, freshness, you lease, no lease, contact, all of that. So how can you age those wines? So the oak program changed too, from about 80% New York at the beginning of the first 2007 whites, uh, Essence de Roussan, now became 20%. So very much more, um, much less uh, percentage. Why? Because if you have a, if you have a wine that a little bit more precise with more acid, more fruit coming up, like white flowers, like less ripe. So the oak will be too much on the way. So we actually also reduce that oak. And we start to kind of bring some uh, components such as uh, concrete egg or uh, amphora or things like that. And so that we have about 15% on aging on that. So it became the wine like this. So let's have a taste. Cheers, guys. No? Let's, let's see if it's good. And well, Jolie, I already did. You won't look at me. Uh, sorry, I'm like so and much. We are looking it. at ourselves on the camera, by the way. <laughs> really disturbing. Um, so, Jolie, I looked for the Euro uh, oven. So, actually, it's all European. So, you are at 235 Celsius. And I would keep it the same top and bottom because you want your bread to be very harmonized, especially for the crust. Even you made me think that I should try sometime to cook it on conventional oven to see if it's actually different from just the baking option. But I'll keep the same 235 top and bottom for that. I hope I answer your question. If I'm not just resend, resend it, I'll read it. But hey, I might come cook my bread to your oven now. <laughs> so what do you think? Huh? I love the smell of that. It's really Roussan driven, but like say Mike, I think it's really present um, uh, with Roussan as well. It's kind of onisecal. It's um, very, uh, you were saying, uh, bringing fat. Mm -hmm. It was crazy the difference when I, from rosé to that, you really have that buttery, not flavor, but uh, texture, you know, like creamy. It's texture. Yeah. That, it's made with Roussan. You know, why we chose Roussan? Yes, maybe because I grew up with it, but also because it's a white wine for red drinkers. That's absolutely it is. Even if it's softer and acid, he has a ton of complexity. And that also is a really good vital for what's happening with the cycle change. Chardonnay, as you all know, and we all love Chardonnay, you know, better than a Montrachet, right, from Burgundy. But can you make that in Paso? No way, it's too hot, you know, so you can lose all that complexity. And Roussan, it's a vital who tend to get ripe very late, later. And that's really perfect for cycle change. Uh, it fits really well. So I think that's why Paso really, I think, perform in a beautiful way with, uh, with the raw uh, wines, with raw grapes. Are the grapes a little bit reddish uh, when they get old or no? Yeah, they are. Because like the Grenache why, uh, That's why grape. they called it Roussan. Remember Roussan, that whole story? R-O-U, it's a rooks, which is red hair. Red, yeah. yeah. Like red. So the next wine, um, maybe, well, I don't want to drink that much. But well, okay, miss. <laughs> <laughs> you need to relax, <laughs> so the next one will be don't you love those bottles right i love the He's the concept chloraven did a great job i love the the yeah, look of it cook up. yeah but that's good actually they're good for nine months is what i said you know as soon as it's bottled because we are, the way we are we, testing it we are saving one so we test it the way months. we bottle it is actually a needle goes into a bottle and push some argon fill the bottle and put some argon and totally gas it so they said it's good for nine months we'll see if it's true other questions 
Uh, Timothy, you, your white wine are the only white wine that I will drink. Thanks for everything. It's the wrong sound. I'm the same, promise. I don't, I'm not a white drinker. And he's white, somehow, uh, okay. <laughs> we have a lot of members where we actually saw last year. We did a lot of visits last year. Mike Maroon from New Jersey. We did a great tasting over there. Timothy and Shana uh, in um, Washington State it was a great visit. Thank you guys for. DC, oh, DC, Washington, DC, sorry. We are French. <laughs> it's the same place, right? <laughs> if you guys want us to come, please let us know. You know, uh, we love to come and visit. We take a plane, it's only a day or two taking out. Be away from our and wife. Roxanne, Thank you. Roxanne if you can. is just becoming livid. <laughs> so we can come has, to you and we can do a great tasting. Uh, so the next one would be the Fleur de Solène. So no, this one is actually for her, my muse, right? Solène. So Fleur de Solène was a wine. Uh, if Roxanne, you want to show the picture. Uh, oh, that, thank you. Oh, that's when we were. That was 20 years ago when we loved each other. <laughs> actually, it was this summer. <laughs> but Because next... you have no hair on that picture, so that's this summer. <laughs> Judy, yeah, we can come in. We can come to you. Let's uh, let's set up a date. You Charlotte. Know? Um, so the next uh, picture, um, uh, that actually, uh, the, if you look at the red label uh, on the middle, that was this wine. It was not Fleur de Solène, it was La Petite, Petite Solène. So La Petite Solène was a brand, a, a blend, I'm sorry, with only Syrah Grenache, something soft on the fruit. You know, it was great every year, but for me, it was like missing something, you know. And so in 14, we start to blend it with a little bit of, uh, okay, we'll come, uh, with a little bit of Cabernet Franc. That was the first year in 14. And the Cabernet Franc, as you maybe all know, it's a super rare find. You cannot find anything on the market as fruits. But now we have some plant at the DSA that will go in the blend, but that will come in the future. I think 22 will be the first one. So we actually moved from Cabernet Franc to Cabernet Sauvignon. And why we did Capsov? Because of her too. She's from Bordeaux, you know. I'm from the Rhone Valley, it's the best side no, no. of France. We are classic and, she's and a... chic. You just <laughs> from the south. <laughs> so we kind of wanted to bring a touch more complexity to it. And I think Cavern is, is actually one of the better ones to bring texture, tannins, um, just something enough on the blend to make the Petit Solène get better. And we changed the name called Fleur de Solène. So um, it doesn't have much oak, maybe 30% new oak, and the rest is neutral. So we actually tend to put for this wine the softest Syrah, the softest Grenache, of course, the rest soft as Grenache, and the softest Cab. And the Cabernet, how can you get soft, right? Cabernet is tanning, it's big, it's like, so the picking is first, don't pick too much, right? Too, many, too, too much, right? And the second is how can you vinify? And we have actually great component called concrete tanks, that uh, we have in this picture. Uh, so concrete. concrete uh, you have the FL on the right against the wall, and you have the true. sleep next to it. And we yeah. have Isis that's at Teen City. You don't like Isis. You left her alone over there. I'm sorry? You have the pyramid one that we called Isis, remember? Yeah, we still have it. Yeah, we still have it. So, you know, definitely those tanks are definitely very fashionable. Uh, I think we have a lot of, uh, wow, next visit. We'll go visit you guys. We'll love to come, you know. So we'll definitely uh, hit you up, uh, Thomas, Christine, and, and Judy, for sure. And they were in Chicago somewhere. Is it Thomas? Chicago, yeah. So uh, definitely the, the concrete come back to life, uh, I will say in a more fashion way. In France, all the cellars were in concrete. Like, they were cubic tank. I, yeah, they were like wall, wall, wall yeah. to wall, and just wall in between. And you would just walk, and it's a... Uh, it was one single. Absolutely, yeah. It's it was everywhere, and then those tanks got definitely uh, torn out away to replace with stainless. Stainless is definitely much easier tank, easier to clean, no issue. But it's closed tank, you know. You have no porosity. It's no porosity. You're right. So what we do now, we actually move out to stainless, and now concrete are back. But they had some fashion. They had some style. They had some shape. Which, if you ask me honestly, Guillaume, is it a difference? I would say no, they're the same. You know, the sales guy will tell you the effort might be better for whatever reason, but definitely the wine on both tanks are the same, you know. So we ferment the Cabernet in this tank to kind of go more freshness, more, more, try to kind of find this kind of a fresh Cabernet we can have components into this soft wine because Fleur is the first red wine, the whole lineup that's the softest. 
That's the one. If Sonny say, Guillaume, I need some wine tonight because the kid made me crazy. I go grab a flood. I never ask for that. I'm yeah, sure. You know, often, you do often. <laughs> More than you think. Never stress. <laughs> so it's definitely um, a wine that's, you know, let's, let's try it, right? Let's see. Oh, it's Capcot. Thomas is in Capcot and Christine is in Chicago. And we have to write that down. Capcot, yeah. Oh, that sounds like more vacation also. <laughs> well, you're always vacation when you go anywhere. Can I go? <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. Oh, wow. I promise we told them to be quiet. <laughs> so I would say if I was doing this one in France, it's like uh, you get slots, right? Get guillotined. How many um, nights a week are we allowed to stay the kids? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Let's focus on the wine. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I was going to say, you know, in France, you know, blending cab with Grenache and Sierra, all of you knows that we have regulation in France. That makes it difficult to be creative except where I grew up you know we're definitely much more open-minded people you know where we can do more things right we say that the the frog spit doesn't touch the white cologne okay right <laughs> so the Languedoc Russian they actually could do that but you declassify the wine you're not an AOC or an ADA named you'll be like chateau so, so and so blend of whatever but you're declassified and actually, you have a lot more new wine coming up in the market to be like those crazy wine blended with different grapes. And actually, they are getting more and more of those and getting more expensive. They are more sought after wine. So look, look it up. So the 21 vintage, um, we moved from 22 from the white and the rosé to 21 uh, for the reds. I said every year, wow, this vintage is awesome. Maybe the best one. But I will not lie. The Fleur de Solène might be definitely one of the best on this glass. Um, and I'm not saying because you're here to maybe at the end buy, I mean, take some on your uh, selection. It's true. You know, look at the color, first of all. It's just like stunning. The color is definitely dark, but kind of a soft dark. Uh, the smell, I mean, definitely the smell. Okay, so I want to do I'm the doing taste. it. Okay. The smell is definitely something as. Top and bottom, you have to do has ripeness, but kind of very, the right ripeness, you know, not overripe, not underripe, it's just right on, you know, it's just the fruit is like fresh fruit cuts, um, not too much like big red red, but kind of uh, under the middle. Why would you say it's the best one? I mean, what is the reason? Did you get the grapes from somewhere else? Is, it was just the year, the weather, what? I think it's a combination of, um, Get, getting be careful in the ripeness, like I said, I, I say I'm saying that a lot, but it's true. Um, you know, maybe listen more the vines the way the way they grow. We but don't do you listen to them because you yeah. don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I say listen, meaning farming. That if we have a blood tend to be great like that, don't change it. You know, keep it the way it is, and just like do with it. Be attentive. Be attentive with it, and, and it will give it to you. And I think it's true. You know. Um, but look at how soft is it. So something interesting we did about two days ago for a release event next week. Maybe some of, some of you are coming. So we did the trial. So I'm already saying a few things about what's going to happen. But I would like to everybody get, get that uh, point. Is we did some decanting trial. So we took this wine and uh, decant for eight hours and then decant for four hours and then compare to basically no no uh okay. no decanting at all and we tasted the wine you know the first one that not decanted was fresh uh kind of tight like what is tight like doesn't express much and then the flower was like definitely a totally different atmosphere like more layer on the palette longer more open more no and then the eight hours were maybe a little bit too much, maybe too much of um, oxygen, you know, because when you when you do um, the decanting, some people sometimes put the bottle and that's by itself. You know, I do always like very gently. I have the bottle around and away. No, exactly. But let's say that's a bottle of wine, you know, on the decanter, I go very slow against, you know, the side. So he goes around. To go slowly. Yeah. I'm not like, you, you see what I mean. So definitely the four hours was the best ones. So if you guys are going to get some of that in the next couple of weeks, 
um, definitely decanting four hours will be definitely good good middle ground for you to get open. So if you have a dinner, just think at lunchtime, open the bottle, just go on a decanter, maybe put a cork on a decanter if you can close it, and then that would be ready. So that, that should be great. We have some questions. So yeah. what is possible? For the bread, should we rotate the pan halfway through the baking time? Keep it easy. You know, it's... with the kids, I think she went to... I, the... use, I, used to I used to do it inside the Dutch, um, how do you call it? The Le Creuset, you know, with the, with the leaf. That's when I used to do 480 and then remove the leaf, spray and do 450, 450, 450 minutes. I gave up all of it. I make it so simple and it's actually as good. So I found that it wasn't necessary to go do something else. So no, it stays here. You see, it's still cooking for me. It starts smelling there, actually. So no, no need to flip it. So, so Tim, the floor is looking good after 90 minutes decant. Yeah. Is it your decanting where you put your timing? I remember of this one, right? <laughs> nice. Love it. Yeah. I have to pace myself it's so much. You guys are ready for harmony number four? Okay, it's okay. Mm. Such I a good know. wine. Some... You want to put on another wine? Yeah. <laughs> Dumb bucket. Any question, guys, on the floor? No? All good? All right, Harmony. You want to talk about it, Harmony? Sorry. Uh, no. Bec oh, no, Becky, Becky. Becky, sorry. How do you how do you design the wine to remind you of Solène? Oh, that's a good question. It's tricky, yeah. Say the right things. <laughs> you know, if you don't know Solène, <laughs> you know Solène likes. Things in a way that's soft, elegant, and not like he is. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a hard worker. I mean, she's waking like every day like crazy to do the brand and take care of the kids. Uh, that try to help also. Um, it's it's definitely her. It's definitely something that has the elegance. Um, Would you say can do the each pause, but like I mean, I don't know. I don't want to give quality to me, but I can have the softness of like loving the kids, loving the family, being very, um, yeah, soft in that side, but also like you were saying, I can be very- But you have the Cabernet behind, that's yeah, her, that's be her character. Extreme. She's like really strong and, you know, kind of really, uh, you see what I mean? So definitely that's, so that's why this one fits so her really robust, well. it's robust, but with fineness around, right? How is that what you would say it or not? Uh, kids yeah. disagree. <laughs> But definitely but on the style. Most yeah. of, I mean, and also it's not like me with my character. It's also my palette, how, what I like, you know, I like flavors. I like, um, I like to be satisfied with when I drink and I eat. I, I don't like to waste eating on something that don't have character, that doesn't bring me flavor, right? That's why so, the Petit Solen for us was, to be honest, a little bit boring because here at Grenache, yeah, we make good wine, of course. But he needs that punch a little bit, that tannins, that texture that will bring from the Cabernet. That's interesting. The move it could have bring it, but at this point, now we're moving like a little bit like the GSM, the Harmony, like we're going to try. So I think really kind of, uh, you know, kind of, uh, it's a big fight between those vital from different regions. I think it really reflects. You like know. we fight, we're from Bordeaux, he's from the Languedoc. So it's like a whole. <laughs> big part. Thomas. How will the wine taste different when they are bottled versus barrel sample? Good question. So, you know, you always hear the bottle shock. Um, so bottle shock is when you actually put in bottle, the wine is shock and the wine kind of yeah, but That's just a certain period of time. I was going to get into. Okay. Yeah. You see, she also likes to say things before I talk. She's really good at that. You want to do it? You want to say it? No, 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 it's all good. Okay. <laughs> so the bottle shock, you know, happen less and less these days because we we take out the wine from the barrel to the tank before to go to bottle. And we all do that basically by almost gravity. We do with hair, we push the wine out, doesn't go through a pump. And the wine is the one the way it is. Do we filter the wine? You can ask, do we filter the wine? 
we do some on, on some and we don't on some. So the floor was actually gently filtered a little bit because the wine never get racked off the barrel. What is racking? Racking is actually moving out the wine from the barrels. As I show you on the white, he has all these uh, leaves. If you don't rack it off, all those leaves, which for me are really important, it's like my arm uh, myself. I mean, that's why I don't want to remove it. It's part of it. It's part of it. Some people rack every two months. They want to get those leaves out. But me, I'm doing the opposite. I never rack, but we had leaves on the top of it. So the wine is very dirty. So when you never racked, even the wine is a touch dirty when you put in tank before to bottle. So we do a very light filtration to be able to look the way it is, you know, kind of, you know, it's not that clean, but it's kind of clean, I always say. So when you have bottle shock, if you filter very heavy, you can have some bottle shock because you go to heavy filtration to look really good. Us, we didn't want to look really good. We wanted to look good, but not as sparkling, sparkling, like clear. Um, and I think when you have bottle shock, you have all those that happening. So now to go back to your question, Thomas. Um, so does it taste, uh, the question was, I'm sorry. How From is a sample wine? to a bottle. Yeah. So I would say you go, so you went to filtration for four hour cycle. So then we filter very gently. We go to bottle. We use a very beautiful bottling line. That is a brand new, it's, it's a person who comes over the estate and do that for us. And he has absolutely stunning equipment and he's also very gentle on the wines so actually you don't have much bottle shock but you have a little bit so i would say you have like six months time frame when the wine will be like a little bit shy and then the wine start to reopen like the 20 uh the 20 start to really showing beautifully now on the testium so it's about almost a year so you have like six months to a year of the wine that's so to answer the question i would say <laughs> the barrel sample will be a touch fresher on the fruit then the bottle wine will be like a little bit more like it will go to a phase and after eight months can be like the one and getting better especially if you decaps i hope i answered the question it was a long answer but yeah elegant, <laughs> elegant is all it is thank you Jordi. thank you so harmony uh so that's a, yeah. yeah that's a wine that you can clearly see on the glass it's always yeah. a wine that's soft the bread is okay yeah, it smells like the no. no it, I think it's one minute, so let's drink oh, the one minute. Yeah, it's looking good. Uh, so harmony definitely focus on a different. Ah, maybe less than a minute. With that quickly. Are you guys also uh, good on timing? Let's see how it looks. So I have two tiny ones, but you might have the family size. So my round country bread. I don't touch it yet. It's burning hot, so I leave it here. Oh, it's beautiful. And don't cut it, even if you can't resist. You have to resist, because that's the big problem with him. It needs to finish inside, so leave it for at least 10 to 15 minutes, so we kind of finish it up. Because if you cut it now, all the steam will come out, and you will lose some of the, the, the end of the cooking inside. So let's leave it, and we'll cut it after. It's hard to resist. Huh? I will go grab a piece right away. So, so like I said, you know, harmony is definitely something more, uh, a little bit different. So definitely you start with the fleur, you know, it's nice on the fruit, has some tannin with the cab, and then you start to really climb the ladder. I always say that about the, each of the wines. Um, so that has a touch more diff, different complexity uh, on the mouth, on the nose. Uh, it's a very showcasing on Grenache. So just like the white wine, it took us seven years to really fine tune the blend. And if I was a touch smarter, I would maybe look at Chateauneuf, say what they do, and maybe kind of do the same thing right away. It actually took me seven years to do it. I think it's mostly the sites we were grabbing the fruit from. Um, the beginning of Close Solène, we were farming all the rows also to save a little bit on the contracts. So Solène was uh, definitely at the house, and I was like taking out those vines, some of that. So the 22, 21 version is definitely uh, the version that uh, we're gearing and we're uh, going that I really love. It's focused on Grenache. It's about 72% Grenache. Uh, it has about 16% Moved and about 14% Syrah. So you can say, wow, those, those numbers look very accurate. They're true. They are absolutely true. So maybe you heard about co-fermentation. Co-fermentation is you put different grapes together at the picking and it became a wine. So we didn't co-ferment that. We actually took 
the Grenache by itself has each vital a different picking date and they all went in different vessel tank barrels fermenting and what's whatsoever and then we try when we make this wine we have we make the best Grenache so we pull all the sample from all the barrels and we make the best Grenache we do the same thing on the moving we take all the barrels of Mauvais, we make the best Grenache, and then we Mauvais, take Mauvais. Mauvais, I'm sorry, and then we take all the Following. barrels of Syrah, the third components. The three components are really for harmony. So Grenache easy, Mauvais easy, but this Syrah is not the same Syrah in the Fleur, or not the same Syrah in the homage and Opel, the four release wine will come up in four months. It's a Syrah that's the softest on the lineup, uh, come from different locations. I think some of it are from Epoch, from uh, York Mountain Evier, which is a cooler site, some from the estate also, and I think that was it. It's only that was a portion. And when we have those three things going on each vessels, okay, we do a blend one, okay, we do 70, 14, 10, or whatever. And so the 21 version definitely the 16% move it took us maybe six blend to really down to 16%. We tried at 14, like the 20, we went 15, and then we went 16. And definitely, you know, that was no, a workout. Yeah. yeah. And why? Because we want to have the Grenache showing beautifully. And that's what we want on this one. It's Grenache driven only. The Mauvais and the Syrah are just here to kind of bring the little push, just like the cab on the Fleur de Solène, just kind of bring the texture for the aging potential. That's a wine. Definitely, Harmony will age, I would say, 10. 15 or more than that, oh. 15 years, which is Grenache tend to be not aging so well if it's like get pushed on the ripeness yeah but because of those two because of two and also because of the Grenache you know Paso is stunning I mean that's about 30 percent uh, estate that's our whole cluster so the whole cluster is when you pick I think on um, uh, Roxanne you have <laughs> a picture with uh, a Grenache uh, berries or a fruit so the whole cluster she told him to never do that on straight on the spot but he's doing it so that's actually, it's actually an old vine Grenache. I'm not lying, it's not the Z estate. It's actually something from France or maybe from Aurora. Um, it's about 100 years old vines. I love, I mean, look it's at the way it grows. It's, it's so pretty. Um, and so you can see those clusters, they're tucked into, into the vegetations. And when you do whole cluster, you actually take the whole thing and you put that in the whole tank, you know, and it brings... <laughs> That's you, it brings more texture, so you don't look that more cute elegance. All the time. <laughs> so let's let's take the wine. I did. It's very again like very different from the previous one. It's, it's way more into a lighter, fresher, but not in a better way or other. No. I can see what you said. That's actually the trick when you make wine. How can you make wine soft on the mid on the attack, but the middle palate and the end just growing? It's like it goes like this, and then the mid, this one just like blow and gets the whole thing. You have no tannin of front, or you have just slightly some tannins. But for me, you taste the Grenache. It's a very great reflection of how Grenache can taste with a touch of punch of Mauvais and Syrah. The Syrah. It's like inky normally. Mm. If you put like 16% Syrah, you'd have totally overturned the wine as more Syrah-ish. Just like Mike said on the Viognier, you know, I will definitely will show, but the Syrah is very toned down, very hidden because the right Syrah for the blend. You have a question? No, Harmony is outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> I love your dog. <laughs> it is really good. I actually, yeah. Especially for a lunchtime, you know, like the fleur, because it's a little bit more body, I would see it more like a dinner wow. kind of, but right now it's at noon. Like I that. would say that's dangerous because it's a wine that, again, <laughs> it's easy to drink, but you have complexity in the meat palate. It's not a wine that goes away and finish. No, it has a lot of layers. And again, I think for me, it's really good. You go back to France, like the Rhone Valley oh, or even the, the, the Provence. You know, a little bit of airball due to the whole cluster. I mean, there's a lot of complexity on that, but it's very seamless. It's smooth. I think it's what's harmony. It's what's when you guys come at the testing I know harmony is always falling out of the shelf because it's, it's the way it is. You know, it's harmony. It's really harmonious. 
We can wait a little bit longer. We need to clean okay. our palette now. Oh, I like it. So Grenache itself, you know, is grown a lot, uh, as you see, as you know, in Rura, Spain. Um, of course, friends who I grew up in Languedoc, the Rome region. And I think Grenache loves to be in a certain style of the way it grows, in the train vines, you know. And I think the hedgerain is actually a vine it's that's... Nasty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> wow. You have some... Go, go back. <laughs> so that's kind of the old hedgerain, uh, Roxanne. So if you have one from the estates, uh, no, we don't, maybe. His name Jennifer, well, that is a beautiful vine, and the harmony is named so well. <laughs> I love you know about the name, just a quick Spice parenthesis. Uh, you remember when we were looking for something that would define um, harmony, but we didn't come up right away? We were with symphony. And that's when Guillaume told me, I love the musical term, but it has to be. And then he came with harmony, which it's funny how we we just came to that word, like everything is playing together, beautifully, musically, and playfully. Um, so we have another question. Uh, I think we're from Jennifer. Okay, Jolie first. Uh, while they're both great wine, this is the first year that I have liked the Fleur de Solène more than the Harmony. What do you think is different this year? It's, like I said, our, our Fleur is absolutely stunning this year, you know, Maybe we did a pretty good job on yeah, the back. Yeah, they keep saying it. Even Roxanne said, remember to say that the Flores Ren is the best here. You know, it's funny because those two are like brothers and sisters. One show better than the other, yeah. and I a week later, the opposite comes, you know. So for me... The evolution me, on bottle is unbelievable. I don't know your style, Jolly. I know you like also texture layer, Cabernet also driven. I think it's what you feel on the Fleur. It's definitely really high quality on that wine. But the harmonies, I think, will show beautifully in the future. I mean, I'm not really concerned. I mean, They're very different. Yeah. What I will drink right now, I will go harmony because that's definitely elegant, soft. Fleur is a touch more masculine that yes, needs a little bit more aging, you know. Um, Bob, or do the, do, how do we make know the length of the wine? It's Bob this time. <laughs> will age in a bottle? How You're right. It's a good question. Um, well, I, have I have been in the past saying, you know, he aged that many years, that many years, that many years, like 15 years plus. Uh, recently, we've done uh, a vertical uh, of Hommage à nos Pères, which is our Syrah Reserve, from 2007 to 2020. And I say 10 years, and I think actually it's more 25 years they can age. They were still pure, fresh, beautifully tannins. And I think, again, that's why Paso becomes on the map now. I mean, I tell you, when I came in in 2004, I was blown away by the region. You know, yeah, I was 22 years old and I said, I think there's a lot of potential. The yeah. one thing about how do you know it's also because of what happened in the past and we've seen which bottle age, for example, in France, they age for like 20 years mm -hmm. easily. And um, it's also, we know when we make the wine, if there is no residential sugar, if there is a True. good balance, if yeah. the pH, acidity, everything match, we know it will age, that's for sure. Yeah. So you have also those those numbers and those scientific... No, no, you're right. When you make the wine also, that's right, Solène, uh, Bob, I think it's on the wine making stand. You know already what you pick, how you do, the job you do. You know already, you are making the wine, actually. You know how. So we are making wine that's actually meant to age, but also drinkable now, which is actually a tough one. So uh, that's why I'm, the wine I'll be... At, in a way, they're a little bit feminine, you know, because they are both ways, you know. So this is Laurie on Thomas' account. What do your French relatives think about your wine as compared to what they are making? They want ours! <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think they really like what we are producing. Even for them, it's hard to drink our wine, even Harmony or Fleur. But because of the alcohol level, not because... I mean, it's low alcohol. We talk about 45 alcohol. Yeah, but it's we are at 12.5, 13 on France. I know. I think it's because the fruit is different here. The fruit is a touch fruitier, different in front than, you, than, than uh, old world. You definitely feel old world style than new world style. You know, definitely you can see that. Even if you pick at lower breaks and all of that um is a fruit has a touch more punch to it texture to it's it exactly true because my parents are arriving on the first which i'm super excited but my dad my parents are wine drinkers but maybe my mom more than my dad heavy wine drinkers and no yeah. <laughs> 
But um, that's the thing. In uh, even us, when we moved, it was pretty shocking. The 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 fruit flavor, even though it wasn't sweet, but the fruit flavor, the alcohol, it was a very strong wine. But actually, our palate love it now. It, we are very attracted by that um, by that fruit. We are more used to more tannin, more uh, how do you say wood flavor, like yeah. leather flavor. In France, we we don't have much fruit in it, and it's very attractive for our European palates actually. Yeah. So they do love it. They That's do. why French wine definitely more earthy, you know, more <clears throat> a touch more drinkable and all of that. But you know, we're working on it. Uh, we're working our ways, and most of the time when we taste closely in blind taste, we don't know it's past orals often, you know. So it's kind of mixed. Oh, Dick is so nice. Thank you. <laughs> oh, join your membership, lovely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's the best. I mean, the support you're giving us. I say it in every letter, but. I mean, it means the world to us that you're supporting us and we can do all that. And um, living our passion here, it's, you know, when my, when we moved, our parents didn't understand exactly what we why we moved. I mean, we had always the idea to buy a property, but we weren't living in that beautiful piece of land for years. And my parents would come visit and they wouldn't say it, but I could read it in their eyes that they're like, why are you so far away from us? Why are you so far away from the family? I mean, you obviously misses us, but you still live here. But you and I knew where we were going. And when we moved on properties five years, six years ago now, I could, I, I mean, I can remember them with their eyes like, oh, man, they're understanding now. They, they finally understand our whole, why for 10 years we've been working so hard and everything, but... I think maybe they thought we'll never get there, and um, and now they love mm -hmm. to come. I mean, it's like when are we coming again? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think they realize, or they wanted to realize, because it's hard to have your kids away, right? Living in a different country. I mean, I, I will imagine now with ours. I think they were afraid, but now they, you know, now they now made, they want they made their <laughs> they know. Sorry, we lose track. So Jennifer, I have a couple of bottles of 19 Harmony. Yeah. How different is that vintage from the 21? From so, Harmony, not Fleur. Yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, I would definitely feel Harmony 19 would be closer to 21 on the spirits and also on the, on the complexity of the wines. So 21 will have more estates than 19, uh, definitely. They are definitely similar even if I always say 19 is the top of the top of the vintage, the best. After 18, 18, 19 has been like three months this year, but 19 has a touch more freshness. This vintage somehow seems to look like 19, but when we tested the whole lineup with the team last week, uh, because we taste only sp uh, spring right now, fall went back to barrels for another six months, another aging, like Lancelot, Hommage. We let uh, those wines get in extend aging barrels because they are a touch more complex, a touch more longer. We want the oak working on them. So 20 months, definitely a better refining. And for me, 21 seems to be a different elegant. But to go back to your question, um, they're similar. Um, which one is better? I mean, I don't know, but- well, Right now you prefer the 21. You've been the 21 the seems to be drinking a bit better than 19s. And I think it's, um, I don't know, it's eight, is uh, we get more precise and, and all of that. Age of the vines too? Is it estates too, yeah? Not too much estate on 19. And yeah. what is the um, 20 in between? Because yes, 19, 21, what about the 20? Oh, the 20? The 20 is right in between, a touch estates. And then, no, actually uh, 20 is a lot of estate fruits. And then 21 also, yeah. So you think your estate fruit are better than the... I don't see it's better. I mean, to be honest, it's actually stunning fruit from here. I'm, I'm actually blown away to everything producing from the estate. Uh, it's very salt. No, 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 <laughs> no. You know, I didn't believe to be like on the spot, like Willow Creek, like, oh, I want to be in Willow Creek when we bought. I really didn't believe that at all uh, mm -hmm. because we are from France with regions, AVA. I didn't want to be stuck again with that, but it happened to be well in Willow Creek. Um, <laughs> And, and definitely, I see more freshness in this area. Definitely freshness if you pick a little bit sooner. So I'm very enjoying it. Jeff, was it your first time Just you make the bread? First bread taste. It's amazing. <laughs> so it looks like we start to have a few people getting out the bread from the oven. I like, to see, I like to see more comments. How is it going? Good? I know we have about 55 people. We have a 30 you know? second delay, so I'm waiting for the answer. So, so I'm missing <laughs> a lot of names on the chat. So tell us. Tell us. 
For us, it is delicious, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if, you are, if we are hungry or not, but like, the salt is really popping yeah. out. Yes. As if you never came to the estate, come over <laughs> because it's wine tasting with a bread like this. So it's tiny. Yeah. I just fed the, the lunch to the kids, but they want some Thank you. Is it hot? It's hot. Yes, answer yes. Oh, yay! Right. Well, now you know you can do it every morning like me. You can think of me every morning. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so let's finish with um, the sweet clementine. How are we on time? And now, when I have you guys still hanging, good? Yeah, sorry. Sorry. We have a few. Okay. It went so well. It's so delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Erica. <laughs> Next time, I'll ask you to show how to make wine. <laughs> <laughs> bread report next. Okay, Jordi. <laughs> I've had the bread at the estate. First, First time, time making it. Good, good. Now you guys know the tricks. Melanie says I have to make bread all the time now. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if you calculate well, I mean, as Guillaume, but I do it almost every day. Well, now I freeze. Sometimes I do back big, big batches and I freeze a lot. So I don't have to make it every day, but I do it pretty often. And if you calculate, I mean, night, you cook it in the morning or morning and you cook it at night. It doesn't take much time. It's just having the wait time well calculated. This is the first time my wife, Kim, made French bread. It is delicious. Thank you for sharing your recipe. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Trust me, it took me a while before I accepted to share yeah, the recipe, yeah, but yeah. actually I have the best reward. You see everything you're saying. It's amazing. Thank you. And as you know, maybe we start to share the recipe. I mean, we, Solen, started to share the recipe during COVID in 2020. That was a good one that, uh, you know, everybody stayed home and said, okay, we have to share something, you know. We can come, but we can share the bread. I'm sure Jennifer is delicious, your, your stew. I'm sure it is. <laughs> if you make it with love, you can't mess up. <laughs> well, we might not have leftover. How do you recommend storing the partial love? That's the best too. You leave it like it's, that. You it's great it for three days. Yeah. yeah. Poof. I leave it like that in my, in my counter. It's right here. So that's how we do, and it, yeah, easy three days. Do you freeze the dough or do you freeze baked loaf? Baked, baked loaf. I never did with the dough, and I don't even keep the dough in the fridge. It doesn't, I'm not good with, uh, with doing halfway like that. My brother I know does that with the pizza dough. Maybe that yeah. would work. But with the bread, no. I cook all the way through. I wait until it becomes cold, like, you know, like still a little bit warm right now, but like in about 10 to 15 minutes. I, and I use regular, okay, I'm giving you all my tricks. I use regular towel bags. Sometimes even the pillowcase, when I don't have any more bags, I use the pillowcase and I stack it in and in the freezer. I have my stack under here. Here, I even have a pillowcase, yeah. And Jeff and Julie are talking about sourdough. Um, yeah, you know, that actually I would love to have some of sourdough. Why don't, why don't you? <gasps> Uh, okay, let's say the truth. When we moved to California, Guillaume told me, I can't stand the sourdough. You have to make a French style bread. <laughs> this is how I came into making bread. And now, did you hear what No, you but just... you can blend some like this, you know? I think you can blend a little bit, like 20%. So I used to make sourdough. I used to have the mother from the San Luis Sourdough Company. I used to teach French to uh, the owners, and um, they gave me some of their mother. I couldn't take care of the mother. It's too much work. I mean, we leave for France, or we go on some trip. And you have to take it with you and it's eating so much flour it was too time consuming i admire the one who does it maybe one day when i get older and i don't have kids but um and but i've never tried to make sourdough beside when i was doing it with the mother but then i've never tried so i'm not really i'm better at french country style so but i can search for you i'll be happy to do it yeah before I, uh, I move into the sweet clementine, I took a touch more vials here. And those, yeah, they're just like yours. But those are actually the 20 vintage. Um, we did about 15 different sets of them. So if you guys are interested to do virtual tasting, you know, that's, you know, love to taste the 20s with friends, we can ship that, those out to you and uh, do tasting virtually. If you have friends who love to, you love to introduce the porcelain. So we have about 15 sets available, FYI, so in the future. So 
Um, Are you doing math tipsing right now? <laughs> no, but just <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry about that. It's over. We did three times. It's over. Sorry, guys. I don't know if you got it, but I was saying that we have actually some of the lineup 2020 and 21 and 22 rosé ready for uh, any people who are interested to do some virtual tasting from home. And if you want to introduce the closer land, we can ship that to you and do do online tasting. So don't don't hesitate. Becky, bread is amazing. I'm glad. I missed and I added three quarter of a tablespoon. Okay, yeah, that's not so. But yeah, put the salt on, <laughs> on the butter. And uh, I mean, sometimes I messed up. I forgot salt sometimes. He hates it when I do that, but I do the same as you. I do it with my salted butter. It's not as tasty. So try it again with the salt, and you'll see it's amazing. But good job. So let's take the the last one, sweet clementine. Uh, do you want to talk about it? No. No. no? So sweet clementine is actually on. Our number one daughter, uh, she uh, she is now close to be fourteen years old. So that's <laughs> that's actually um, you know it's 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 an experience I will say you know uh, she's right here yeah on and the she, middle. She introduced herself at the beginning. She's yeah, she actually started by actually yeah. So that's actually a sweet wine that yeah sometimes she helped me in a in a sorting table maybe it happened once every two years uh, she actually helped no. <laughs> uh so it's it's actually a wine that's um it's it's a sweet it's wine a but it's yeah. a dessert wine so dessert wine can be a port uh, this one is 45. Et mais en même temps, on avait besoin de fourrer de la cuisine. Ah, c'est bon, de partie. Ok, so sorry guys, I think a Saturday with a lot of people trying to connect, not just you guys, but the tasting room and all that, it's kind of... So, yeah. Sweet Clementine, Sweet Clementine. it's a fortified wine. Yeah, so it's made with a Grenache uh, mainly. So we have a little bit of Grenache grey from, uh, from the estate inside a little bit. And so it's uh, it, it starts to ferment, and halfway through fermentation, we brandy uh, about six percent of brandy at one and five proof. About just kill the yeast. The sugar left is what you have. You know, we age that in neutral oak, and it's just like a great wine for any dessert type you have, or you know, can be also an appetizer. We do that in appetizer in France. But it's good also with cheese. I we love it with cheese. Or so sometimes I just do a platter with some cheeses, bread, and a few dark chocolate pieces, and that just pairs very well. Mm. Uh, after you can obviously do it on a vanilla ice cream, or I mean, you'll find I'm sure the way to to drink it. And when you open it, you can leave it open for yeah, a long time. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. That can age a long time. Opens a week or two, no problem. It's a banyul style, right? Did you mention that? Yeah, so banyul is an area in France, but now we're where I grew up, and they have those uh, vines of Grenache tucked, vines like that. tucked on the terraces and the Mediterranean. It's like stunning. It's stunning the blocks. whole area in France that's all in a hillside, yeah. and it's looking at the Mediterranean Sea on the bottom. Yeah, so, and so we make those uh, sweet wines with uh, Grenache and some Grenache Grey a little bit, and some other varietals. So it's definitely a good reflection in past rules, you know. And why we, I'm not a big fan on sweet anyway, but um, which I love, which, what I love about it, it's, um, it has a lot of minerality and you can really test wine. It's not just um, sweet and mm -hmm. I would say irritating, I'm sorry, but like too much sugar would just irritate my teeth. Yeah, I mean, it's great to finish a dinner 
with that, you know. Yeah. You don't know what to open. You have some sometimes sweet tooth in a in a in a, in a, in a dinner party. So we sh uh, chocolate goes really well. I mean, any any type of dessert. Truffles. Yeah, you know, tarts too. Let's get hungry. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed the lineup um, and the bread making. Uh, definitely, any question, guys, let us know. Um, Look at that, I already have gone. I'm getting so. <laughs> I think on the packets here, where you had all the releases of wines, I think on the back end, you have some explanation how to well, select. Roxanne will come over. Roxanne, you want to talk about it? Roxanne. Roxanne. Hello. Hello. Hello everyone, thank you so much for staying with us. I'm so sorry about the internet, it's a holiday weekend and we are busy, busy, busy in the tasting room, so they're using a lot of iPads and internet bandwidth, but you know, I think it went well overall. Uh, we were able to stay with you the whole time. Uh, so I just wanted to tune in really quick and then if you have questions, uh, please go ahead, they could stay for like five minutes. But you know, the reason why we also decided to do this virtual was because with COVID, we did a lot of them, and then we prioritized and went and started doing more of the in-person, and a lot of out-of-state members did not get the chance to try the new wine before they customized. So we won't be able to do it each release, but we will try our best to do it uh, as much as we can, um, you know, every year for you to try and then to get to customize. Um, so the club is opening on Monday, but uh, for all the people that have tuned in, you are able to log in early and select your spring allocation online. And on the back, we kind of wrote a little bit how to do so, but the best way is for you to log in on the website. Uh, and you will need your email and also you will need um, the, your account, your, your password. And once you're there, you're going to see a tab that says membership. And once you're on that membership tab, you're going to see your club and on the left hand side, a way where you can edit the wines. Uh, and so from there, you could remove uh, and add as much as you would like. However, you cannot add or remove unless there's a minimum, minimum of three or a minimum of six. Um, thank you, Juju. <laughs> I have a little friend here. Um, but anyway, then once you're decided and you selected, you could save your selection. But just to let you know, we will bill into February 28th. So it gives you a few days to think, to talk about it with your spouse, significant other. And then on February 28th, you know, we will bill and we are shipping everything on April 10th. However, certain states that are hot, such as Texas, uh, Arizona and Florida, we are shipping on March 13th. Uh, but please feel free to email me uh, if you have any questions. I will be here for a little longer to help you out. But uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you, Oksane. Um, I see a couple of pictures. Um, sorry. And the brie. Jennifer was saying with the brie, I, I imagine it might be delicious. And yeah, could be a good one. Could be a great one. And the bread. Really, it's too small, Shai. So we have a couple of questions. Uh, Dick, uh, you said enjoy them all. Wondering if you are going to... And we are back. <laughs> okay, guys, you are going to get rid of us, but just to respond to the questions about the white wine, are we going to make white wines?
Et, euh, ouais. Merci pour le vin et le pain incroyable pour partager votre week-end avec toi. We are deeply sorry, sorry, sorry. We're trying. We next time we promise we'll do it on the weekday. <laughs> So, But, uh, the white, yeah, so we make another white wine. It's uh, on coulis that come in full, it's 100% Chardonnay. So we do two whites. Yep. Um, uh, is there Thank any... you guys for the support. Oh, no. I see a lot of everybody loved it. That's great. Thank you. For and... vin le pain. <laughs> uh, you need to plan a trip to Bordeaux for member. I know we are planning. Mean, that's a Roxanne question. <laughs> Again, she's white leaving on the back. No, we, mm. we, we'll do it actually. It's well, on the, we are working on it. It's on the, um, she's working on it. It's on the, tar how do you say? Target. 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 So thank you so much, guys, for coming. And thank so you. so sorry for the internet. I'm deeply sorry. And we hope to see you at the estate maybe next weekend or we'll travel to you. You know, come let us know. Thank, thank you, you so guys. Much. Happy weekend. <laughs> And happy when 